Good morning. Today is Saturday, the 27th of June, 12th week in the churches here. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those who set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the readings are those of Ephesus, not a feast day today. And the first readings are from Lamentations, talking about the desperate plight of the poor, the hungry and the starving in Jerusalem from Lamentations. Um, as a result of the invasion of the Babylonians. And the psalm also turns to the Lord and asks for recovery from the pitiful state that they're in. The Gospel, however, continues in Matthew chapter 8, uh, following on yesterday's readings. It's chapter 8, verses 5 to 17. When Jesus went into Capernaum, a centurion came up and pleaded with him. Sir, he said, my servant is lying at home paralyzed and in great pain. I will come myself and cure him, said Jesus. The centurion replied, Sir, I'm not worthy to have you under my roof. Just give the word and my servant will be cured. For I am under authority myself and have soldiers under me. And I say to one man, go, and he goes. To another, come here, and he comes. To my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished, and said to those following him, I tell you solemnly, nowhere in Israel have I found faith like this. And I tell you, many will come from east and west to take their places with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be turned out into the dark, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. And to the centurion Jesus said, Go back then. You have believed, so let this be done for you. And the servant was cured at that moment. And going into Peter's house, Jesus found Peter's mother-in-law in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her, and she got up and began to wait on him. That evening they brought him many who were possessed by devils. He cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah. He took our sicknesses away and carried our diseases for us. The Gospel of the Lord A further word about the first reading, when you hear about the children fainting from hunger at each street corner, one cannot but think of today's refugee camps, perhaps in Turkey, perhaps in northern Syria, perhaps in Myanmar, where just such starvation and hunger is going on now. We need to see what we can do to try and build a world where this hunger is not allowed to occur and where we share our resources better. The Gospel begins with the centurion coming to Jesus at Capernaum. Capernaum is not far from Nazareth and it's where Jesus set up in a sense his headquarters for all his missions when he went out to preach. It was his base. And for the Roman centurion to come to him was extraordinary. They were the occupying power, they were the outsiders, very unpopular, very powerful, very cruel. And yet the centurion came to him about a servant of his who was sick and in pain, clearly indicating the humanity of the centurion. Although a Roman soldier, he cared for those, in his, those who were serving him. It's not clear whether his servant was from a, a Roman as well, or more, somebody local. Anyway, Jesus undertakes to cure him, and we get this extraordinary dialogue 
whereby he says, you don't need to come. I know you're a man of authority and what you say will happen, even at a distance, will happen. And Jesus is very impressed with the faith of the centurion and goes on to give the little lesson which perhaps they needed to hear at the time, that his new dispensation, the Christian world, was universal. It wasn't just for the people of Israel. So you hear Jesus say, people from east and west, the borders of Israel, far away, people coming, they're all welcome at the great feast in the kingdom of heaven. This great vision of the church embracing all humanity. He says those words, and those very words are the ones we use as we prepare to receive communion in the Eucharist. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you under my roof. There's a sense in which the centurion's faith is spread across the centuries now. Then goes on to talk about Jesus going to Peter, Peter's house where his mother-in-law is sick. And Jesus touches her and cures her. And she gets up and begins to serve them. I think our first reaction is to say, oh, well, she's been very sick. She doesn't have to start serving. But I think it was a sign of how strong and how perfect Jesus' healing is that she got her strength back and she was able to serve them. But we also hear the, the vision that Isaiah gave in which Jesus, Jesus fulfills to show that he is the Messiah curing sicknesses, taking our diseases upon himself. Not because, because he's become uh, the best medical doctor just for physical diseases in this world, but because this is the disease in a sense of being a flawed human being and how going through life we prepare for the place in heaven, the kingdom, the banquet, where we will all be healed and live a good life in love and this life is a preparation for that. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Father, send us your spirit. Father, send us your spirit. God's gift was not a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. So with complete confidence we pray, Father, send us your spirit. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ you have given us every spiritual blessing. Father, send us your Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Mary brought Christ into the world. Through the Church, may Christ be born again today in the hearts of men and women. Lord, send us your Spirit. Father, may your Spirit lead us forward out of solitude. May he lead us to open the eyes of the blind, to proclaim the word of light, to reap together the harvest of life. Father, send us your Spirit. Let our striving for your kingdom not fall short through selfishness or fear. May the universe be alive with the Spirit and our homes be the pledge of a world redeemed. Father, send us your Spirit. And we turn to the Father, the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We pray. All-powerful, eternal God, splendor of true light and never-ending day, at this return of the morning hour, chase away the night of sin and fill our minds with the glory of your coming. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Have a good day.